Hello everybody, it's Amel, and today I'm going to show you how to solve the add to numbers 2 problem. In the previous video, I taught you how to solve the add to numbers problem, but this one is more complicated. So you will see. You are given two non-empty linked lists, representing two non-negative integers. The most significant digit comes first, and each of their nodes contains a single digit. Add the two numbers and return it as a linked list. You may assume the two numbers do not contain any leading zero, except the number zero itself. So, as you can see, this problem is more difficult than the previous problem that I taught you because of the way it, it represents the number. The linked list represents the number in the normal way. So this is 7243 plus 564. So you have to write a method that adds these two numbers up and returns the result as a linked list. So the result should be a linked list that is 7807. So why is this problem more difficult? Because as you know, this is a singly linked list. And in order to add these numbers up, you will have to start from the end and go backward. So you will have to go from right to left, but this linked list only has pointers to the next node. So how can you traverse the list backward? So in order to do that, you have two options. You can use recursion or you can use a stack. When you use recursion, you use the implicit stack. But if you want, you can also use an explicit stack in order to traverse the list backward. So you would, if you use a stack, then you would go through every list you would go through the first list and push every element to the stack. Then you would go through the second one and push every element to another stack. Then you can pop from the stack at the same time and you will be popping uh, in reverse order. So you can start from right to left. When you pop three and you pop four and add them up, so you get seven. Then you pop four and you pop six, add them up. You get 10, but you get a rightmost digit of 10, which is 0, and you have a carry of 1. You put a 0 here, make a new node, and have a carry of 1. Okay, you, pu you pop 2 and 5. Add them up, 7 plus the carry is 1, you get 8. And then you have a 7, you pop the 7, and you make a new node with a value of 7. Because there's nothing to add it with. S so, what you use is... You can use a stack or you can use recursion, but I think the using the stack is better um, because using the stack explicitly doesn't have the limitation of running out of space um, if you reach the maximum um, of the recursions of the recursion stack. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to write the code. So I'm going to have stack of integer s1 gets a value of new stack of integer. So this is going to be for the first list, stack of integer s2 gets a value of new stack of integer. So this is going to be for the second list. So first I'm going to say while not while L1 is not equal to null, I'm going to push to S1. So S1 dot push L1 dot value. And I'm going to say L1 gets a value of L1 dot next. So what I'm doing here is that I'm going through the first list and I'm pushing every value that I see uh, to the stack, to stack number one while L2 is not equal to null S2 dot push L2 dot value and L2 gets a value of L2 dot next so I'm going through the second list I see a number I push it to the second stack and then advance L2 to the next number to push the next number to the second stack again and then in that way, I'm going to have the two stacks populated with uh, the values that I need. So, 
Now, I'm gonna need a variable, integer sum gets a value of zero. This sum is gonna allow me to store the sum of every digit, for example, three plus four is seven. And I'm also gonna use the sum to store the carry at the same time. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have a separate variable for the carry. In order to make the code um, shorter, I'm gonna have only one variable for the sum and the carry together. So I'm gonna have a pointer to node result gets a value of new list node with a value zero. And this here is gonna be a pointer that will keep track of the of the head of the result uh, of the final result. So I'm gonna say while not as one that is empty or not as two that is empty. So while I have elements left to add in the first list or I have elements left to add in the second list, I have to keep going. So I have to add those elements to the final result. So how do I add them? I'm gonna check if not s1 that is empty then sum plus equals s1 dot pop so if I have some if I have a number on the first stack I have to add it to the sum also if s if not s2 that is empty then sum plus equals s2 dot pop if I have a number on the second stack, I also have to add it. For instance, here I have three and here I have four, so I add it to the sum. And remember that I don't have to worry too much about the carry here, because the carry, I'm gonna be having the carry in the sum variable on every iteration. Initially, the, the carry is zero, so the first iteration is, is already taken care of. So then I'm gonna say, okay, now I have the result of um, the first value plus the second value plus the carry. So now I wanna add it to the result. So result that value gets a value of sum modulo 10. Why modulo 10? Because as I told you in the previous video, this allows you to get the rightmost digit. So if you add four plus six, you get 10, but you don't wanna I put the 10 here, you want to take the rightmost digit of the 10, which is a 0. So, and then you also have a carry. So here we have that 4 plus 6 is 10, so I put I'm a 0 in the node. So this is what I'm doing here. And then, I want to make a new node. I'm going to say list node head gets the value of new list node with what value am I gonna put here? Well, I'm gonna put sum divided by 10. And this is integer division. And why am I putting sum divided by 10? Because I want to put the carry in this head node every iteration. In that way, when I'm done with all with everything at the end of the loop, if I have zero in this node, I'm gonna know that there, there's no carry at the end. But if I have a one, then that's gonna be taken care of and I don't have to handle the case of the carry separately. So you will see in a moment. But this is why I'm putting this value here for this head node. And um, why am I calling this value head? Because I'm gonna be inserting this node at the beginning of the final result every time. For instance, I'm gonna start from the right here and from the right here, so three plus four is seven. So what I'm doing is that final result, I have the seven, and then I'm gonna make the head node, I'm calling a head because it's gonna be in front of the seven. So this, I'm gonna insert in front of the seven. That's why I'm calling a head. How do I insert a node in front of another one? So I can say that now head, that next points to whatever result pointer is pointing to. So I'm making this connection. I insert a new node here, which is head, so I, I connect it to the, to the result that I had before. And then 
I'm gonna say that the result pointer now points to the head. So now the result was pointing here, but now it's gonna point to this number, which is what the head pointer is pointing to. And that's how you insert a new node in front of another node. And now that I have this connection made, I have to take care of the carry. Remember that I'm using the sum variable to store the carry as well. So if I do sum divides equals 10, what this is gonna do is that the sum variable now has the carry for the next iteration. And in the next iteration, uh, it's gonna add the next value, for example, for example, four, and then it's gonna add six, which is 10. And for example, if there's a carry, it's gonna add um, one or zero, depending if there was a carry. And this is gonna allow me to uh, store the carry in the sum variable every iteration. And then um, after this loop is done, I'm gonna check return result that value equals 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 zero. If the value here is zero, that means that there was no carry. So if there was no carry, I return result that next. Otherwise, I return result. So this line can be confusing, but I'm gonna explain it to you. So remember that here I'm storing the carry every time um, in the new node that I make. So and I'm inserting that node at the front, at the beginning of the list. So if at the end of everything, if there was no carry, then this will be zero in this node. So if I check at the end of everything that it was zero, then I, I return the next node. I don't include the first node that I added because there was no carry. But if, if it was not zero, that means that there was a carry of one. So I return the that node as well. So I return the entire result. So I'm going to run the code. Okay, it seems to be working fine. I get 7,807. So I'm going to submit the solution. All right, 27 milliseconds faster than 68.31% of Java online submissions. All right, so this is working perfectly. Um, as you can see, I'm using two stacks. So the time complexity is big O of M plus N, where M is the length of the first list and N is the length of the second list. Um, the space complexity is also big O of M plus N. Uh, please press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And see you next time.